Welcome back. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Markets uh, had a little bit of a rebound this morning, but are down this afternoon as the little relief rally from the sell-off yesterday did not last very long. And as we say, it's always the momentum into the close that kind of gives you an idea of what investors are thinking. And uh, investors are still con uh, concerned about inflation and um, the ramifications of inflation not being priced into the market yet, as we've been discussing. And the Fed needs to actually take action. They haven't done anything yet. Fed, the Fed's Brainerd was talking today and uh, the language out of the Fed is still very strong. So we're gonna continue to hear more Fed board members speaking their mind and then uh, ultimately leading into the meeting next month to kind of find out um, what they're going to actually do, which we know they're going to reduce the balance sheet and raise interest rates. And the market is starting to price in aggressive action by the Fed. That's what we're seeing. Of course, there was some tax selling going on as well. So um, a lot of investors will uh, take profits to pay taxes. This is tax deadline week. So you have to make your payments this week because the deadline is Monday for those bank transactions to clear, but you can put a check in the mail on Monday uh, and just catch that postal mark then. But right now the conversation is still focused on inflation and with the CPI coming out today, as expected, markets rallied on that because it was not worse than expected as they were prepared for the worst case scenario yesterday. So let's take a look at Bitcoin. This is Bitcoin on the daily. And we have been monitoring this trend line yesterday's video. Um, I like to use the closes and this is why you can see that price on the close has been really respecting this trend line. So at this point, we have a higher low. Bitcoin has put in a higher low right now. So the question is, as we are watching this uh, unfold, is price going to reject here, test, and then kind of roll over for a little bit more downside? Or is it going to maintain this upward trajectory here, put in uh, another potentially uh, higher low here, and then kind of continue on from there and break past this last lower high that was put in. So right now it's a higher low. What we're looking for is for Bitcoin to continue on to put in another higher low and just kind of continue on from there. And of course we have the upper boundary of the channel that we've been tracking right here. And again, I like to, I like to line these up on the closes because price tends to respect the closes of these channels. And that's kind of where uh, things are at right now in terms of uh, continuation. So, you know, it depends on how long this channel goes. Uh, some people are looking at this as a bear flag with an, you know, eventual breakdown. And what's going to determine that, of course, is going to be whether or not it breaks this lower trend line. If price breaks below this lower trend line, then you could see potential continuation of that bear flag at that point. And then the question is, how low does it go from there? And you can extend, I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can extend the bear flag and it's got pretty low targets that I just, um, you know, unless there's a severe economic event or World War III breaks out where the United States, NATO, and the Western world declares war uh, on Russia to um, help Ukraine. In that regard, I, you know, that would be something that would, you know, be a catalyst for an extreme major market meltdown where you'd go back and revisit those March lows. Um, but unless we get something like that, uh, I'm still looking at this 30,000, 29, 30,000 level as last point of support, the major macro floor for Bitcoin right now. Um, I don't expect it to break that unless we have severe economic, um, a severe economic event, uh, major market meltdown or some other uh, type of event out there like uh, world war and especially a nuclear conflict uh, that would definitely create an event in the markets like we're looking at. So here's hourly. This would be where that trend line is and prices bounced off that trend line right here that we drew and it's headed back down. So uh, we'll see if we get a retest here and price holds, we could look for continuation from that point. If it breaks through, then you're going to see continuation to the downside. And uh, the projected target was about 20% from the recent local high of 48,000 which would bring price down to about the 37, 38,000 range, somewhere in there flat, looking for another higher low uh, before the next move. So that's kind of what I'm looking at there. If it bounces and goes on from, 
from this area, then the upper level obviously is that 30, uh, 48,000 is our local high for now. So let's take a look at some of the altcoins because this is interesting. A lot of the altcoins are following the same patterns that we've been looking at, uh, kind of testing these major market support levels. Ethereum is kind of at a critical level on that $3,000 balancing act. Uh, if it can stay above uh, 2,900 into the $3,000 range, then um, it's probably gonna be okay for the short term, but worst case scenario, it could break back down to this $1,700 range back where it was last summer or test these lows here in the $2,000 range if Bitcoin really breaks down. Avalanche is another one that's kind of right there on a, you know, following a trend line, just like Bitcoin, trying to decide what it's going to be uh, or where it's going to end up uh, with continuation or more downside action. So if we kind of draw that trend line right there, it's kind of like Bitcoin right there on the close. It has not quite reached the bottom of that trend yet on the daily. Uh, maybe you could say this wick kind of bounced off of it, but again, a lot of the altcoins are lining up with similar type patterns in terms of this one's already broke down and lost its trend matic. Solana has lost its major trend right in this area. Uh, so they're all kind of hanging on major support. If you look at them right here, here's Solana again, not a whole lot below this little area. This has been support right in here in that $75, $80 range. Um, so if price goes back to revisit there and breaks through, then you can go look for some of these lower ranges back into the 20s. Um, Matic, same thing. A lot of support and resistance in this range here to get through. So Matic has a lot of support right now. Um, Cardano, not so much. Cardano's got this one little area of support here, and then it can ultimately break back down in the 29 uh, to 30 cents range. Right now, the low was 78 cents. So we'll see how that holds up. Chainlink, same thing. Chainlink's got a lot of support right here before an ultimate breakdown. Crypto.com, same thing. Aave, you can kind of see where Aave has been. Not a whole lot supporting that until you get down to the $75, $80 range. So a lot of the altcoins are in the same position as Bitcoin. You have, you know, lots of support for Bitcoin to get through before it can go down and test some of those lower ranges. And then you have a, you know, that last line of defense is that $19,000, $20,000 range. If it somehow broke $30,000, that's your next stop there. Uh, to see if price will hold up. And again, I'm not expecting it to break 2930. I think there will be a lot of uh, buying pressure at that point. I know a lot of the institutions, a lot of the uh, hedge funds, investment funds, investment banks, a lot of the clients are waiting for that 30,000 to get touched again, uh, to jump back in. Right now, 33 was the last low. Uh, and there was you know quite a bit of attention at that level. So I think what, if it gets back into the lower 30s, you're gonna see a lot of buying pressure. And uh, which would be good because this could be a macro floor being put in at Bitcoin. And then your range is now 30, you know, thousand to 69. Well, 29,000 to 69,000 on the, you know, ranges. And again, I'm looking at Coinbase here on the price action. So that's kind of the range that, uh, that Bitcoin is trading in right now. And this is an upward uh, parallel channel. So if we do the parallel channel here, and then we look down here on the bottom range of it like that. Um, this is the macro, you know, higher range and let's use the wicks on this. You know, we can use wicks, we can use closes, whatever, but that's the higher range kind of a macro channel that we're looking at, uh, Bitcoin. And then of course the lower time frame range within, uh, channel within the bigger range right there, upward trending, upward trending. So this is just a mini version of this, as long as price stays within this channel, then you could expect uh, somewhat, if it continues to bounce off of this and continues up, at some point it'll break this, back check it, and then come back up to test the upper range of this channel again, right here that we are drawing out. So this could be a longer term trajectory of Bitcoin moving into the future, just kind of working its way up uh, to those upper ranges. So this could take some time. I mean, this gets into next year where you start getting back up into that 75, 80,000 range, which would be incremental adjustments from this peak here. And of course it is Bitcoin. So anything can and will happen. It is a highly manipulated market. It's an easy market to manipulate. Um, and the whales love playing their games. And then you have the algorithms and things like that. But at the end of the day, the investment banks that are setting up shop, the bigger funds like BlackRock, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, are all setting up their trading desks. 
And again, those are trading desks. They make their money trading, getting in, getting out. And the more Bitcoin ranges like it does between 30 and 70,000, that's a huge, huge trading range uh, that investors would rather see that. Investors like that make their money on trading would rather see that because it'll be some time before, um, you know, if they're in, if there are, if it is possible for those upward targets to be hit in the future above 100,000, like some people are projecting 250, 500, a million, whatever, that's going to take a long time to get there. You need a lot of capital coming into the space to get it there. Uh, there's a lot of great news about the space. It's growing, more capital is entering the space, more talent is entering the space. But to drive, you know, but a lot of that's getting spread out in other assets, other, other aspects of the business between um, the metaverse, NFTs, DeFi, things like that. A lot of the capital is going into DeFi. Metaverse has kind of cooled off a little bit. Gaming is a big space that's attracting a lot of capital um, versus just throwing it into a speculative asset like Bitcoin, which requires broad scale retail adoption because most of these investors at the institutional level level are not going to just put it on the balance sheet and hold it and hope that it goes to a million. They're traders, they're getting in and out. That's how they make their money. They make their money on trading. Uh, and the investment management firms that are managing those assets for those investors make their money on trades, getting in and getting out. So that's kind of why Bitcoin gets stuck in those ranges and they're not stupid. They need to buy low and sell high. So they need to have uh, the opportunity to make money on those ranges. and. That's why you're not seeing price just shoot through the roof right now and everybody's scrambling to buy Bitcoin because those investors are not going to fall into the FOMO. They're waiting for price to hit a certain level so they can jump in. And then you'll see a lot of attention. Then they'll exit when it gets up and they'll just do it over and over and over, kind of like we're seeing the whales do when price hits these levels of distribution that we were looking at. So these are the things I'm looking at and I will see you on the next video.